Okay. Welcome back to the Philip Rosenberg Show. Uh, tonight, we are going to talk to Volker Goetz, who does many different things. But tonight, we're going to talk about a film that he's made and his musicianship. Uh, that's probably his oldest and most deep connection to art. So he is an artist, though. He's a composer. He's a trumpeter. Um, he is a guy that arrived in here in New York about 18 years ago. And I think you could fairly say that his contribution to the art world is in New, here in New York is multifaceted, meaning he does a lot more than just one thing. He's not just a musician. He's not just a filmmaker. Um, he recently produced New York City's first sound sculpture walk called Sonic Gates. Um, and so then toured the globe for 12 years with his transcultural African harp and trumpet duo, which is what we're going to talk about tonight with Griot and Cora Virtuoso, Virtuoso Ableye Sissoko, whose name I'm pretty sure I'm massacring. Uh, anyway, they released multiple jazz albums, including uh, large ensembles and orchestral stuff, while also creating feature documentaries. Very uplifting and inspiring guy. And I uh, appreciate you joining us tonight, Volker. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for having me here. Absolutely sure. my pleasure. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, Griot. So that's a documentary that sets out to explore the history and rule. This is according to, uh, this is one observer who said, the documentary sets out to explore the history and role of griots, whose spiritual and musical talents are passed through the blood from generation to generation. Their role is many faceted historian, storyteller, praise singer, poet, and musician. And Ableya Sissoko in particular, thinker, leader, and gifted musician is an exemplar. So I, the first question I want to ask you is how different is the tradition of griot from that Homeric tradition that much of the Western world is familiar with, where you're passing down through story and poetry and perhaps a bit of music, essentially history? Well, I think the main difference is that the... Uh, uh, there didn't used to be a, a written language in West Africa for many years. Uh, so the only uh, um, early documents of, of documents were um, trade documents or uh, the um, the Quran, you know, which which came there in the uh, later on. But, but 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 their tradition goes much much further back than than the the arrival of Islam in in West Africa. So and uh, so the Griot tradition, sir, you're saying is older than the ancient Greek tradition of storytelling as history? Uh, wow, uh, that's, uh, that's a hard so question. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't really, uh, I think that nobody really could, uh, if, if we consider Africa as the uh, birth of humanity, birthplace of humanity, it, 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 it's, it is in some ways you could say it's older than the Greek. Uh, but the Greek tradition. tradition. The Greek tradition yeah. might not the, be. Yeah. Well, the Greek tradition that that's not really clear because of the fact that there were no written documents, or there aren't any written documents. So the the ideas that uh, uh, the explanation of what love historians come up with is that they come out of a, a hunter's tradition, where they encourage uh, people to sacrifice their life by praise singing. Uh, the great hunters, so that the young generation who's growing up uh, risks their lives for the community to feed the community uh, or fight in a war, um, you know, so it's, it's, but when that really, when it really started, it's, it's really hard to tell. It, there is the first story or kind of like a first story which recounts the, the tradition of the Guyu is the, um, the, um, uh, I forgot the book. It's it's uh, it's in Mali. It's a Ma Mali Empire, and it's called. Uh, That's okay, but it, you know, it's interesting. That's another comparison from the Greek to the West African tradition. Is that also the Homeric? You know, uh, the epic poems of Homer were not originally written. They were passed yeah. down f from for many generations, strictly as stories, as tales to be told, perhaps at a pub or an inn. Or as part of entertainment, and so and and there's no way to as a result, there's also no way to track precisely uh, when Homer's poems were written. So same same sort of problem, I guess. Suffice it to say, they're both 
quite old forms and they seem to be related in both style, style and substance, which is quite interesting because they're not often seen as analogous to one another. So let's talk about your film. Now, the Griot tradition is the tradition of storytelling story and passing the passing of information and history in West Africa. And how does your film Griot add to that tradition or observe that tradition? Well, for, for me, it was uh, uh, completely new to learn about uh, the fact that there was no written language in West Africa and how it was transmitted and that there were this, this cast of musician and storyteller born into the society who had this vibrant, uh, still up-to-date improvisational music. So this, it's, it's kind of like the, the roots of many of the slaves came from that area region and, and came, brought that music to the United States um, because the majority of slaves came from West Africa and then moved later on further down south, uh, the west coast of Africa. So that, that's in many ways is fascinating as a jazz musician and you always uh, are interested in, in African music as, as being the roots of jazz. Um, so, and uh, for me, learning about it uh, gave me the idea, I, I want to share this experience, you know, the, 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 the stories they are telling and what functions they had, you know, they, they were teaching the people how to behave, where they come from, they were telling the story of a village, uh, there were travel musicians who uh, made money, but also learned different languages, so there were translators, there were journalists, there were the speakers for the kings, um, hey, why don't we take a look at the trailer? What do you think? Let's let's have a quick look at the trailer. Yeah, and talk sure. a little bit more about it. So I'm just going to do a little screen share. Yeah, Jazz, blues, bossa nova, samba, reggae. Because if you take out Mother Africa, you don't have it. So for me, it's just uh, Mother Africa's spirituality. One of the interesting things is how they are trying to rethink and redefine the role of the people. All right, I dig that a lot. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. how long was the film in the making? Oh, it took me five years. So the the uh, original idea to make this film came in 2008. So I just came back from my first trip. So I was I, actually, the, maybe it goes further back. So um, uh, in 2001, I saw this edition paper on, on in the conservatory where I was studying in Cologne that they were looking for musicians for in jazz, African European jazz orchestra. And so I sent my tapes into Paris, auditioned, and then I got this email, come to Paris, you know, that this time we're going to fly to Senegal. So um, 
I arrived in the in Chicago, and then at this point there was uh, this 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 old Chicago, but it was not connected. Today it's, it's clearly defined. You know, there's a train between it, but back then you just had to take a bus, and it was just you know gate. 31 and nobody at Charlie Gold knew where gate 31 was. So I thought, oh, this is completely fake. You know, <laughs> I'm never, never going to arrive to Senegal and it's just a fake email. But, you know, it was weird because I auditioned in Paris, you know, I met the people and I got this email. So I thought it must, must be true. So, so it's, you know, time went by and it's closer, closer. And finally I found this bus driver who told me, yeah, well, there's another Charles de Gaulle on the other end. You have to take this bus, it takes 20 minutes. And then you were there. And so I got there and I saw a bunch of musicians and, you know, like a uh, con- uh, double bass case and uh, saxophone cases. And I, oh, that's, that's where I have to be. <laughs> so, and, and we flew and back then the Air, uh, Air France actually did a trip from, I always flew from, from uh, Paris to St. Louis, Senegal, to Dakar, and back to Paris. So they made the stop direct flight to St. Louis, which is a small town. It used to be the capital city of Mauritania, or the colonial capital of West Africa for uh, Mauritania, Senegal, and... Uh, let, me, let me ask you, let me ask you. So a, a big part of your experience of West Africa and Griot, obviously, is your relationship with Ablai Sissoko. So uh, you've explained how you, a, a bit about how you met him, but I would like to get a little bit of insight about him from you. So what would you say is unique about Mr. Sissoko as a musician or as a human being perhaps, and or as a human being, what is it that speaks most loudly to you about him? Well, he's very unique. Uh, his, uh, what makes him unique, you know, in, this, in the tradition of our traditions that we have to come back to also to the family. So he has these 21 brothers and sisters who all make music. So his father had four, for, for wives and he's, he was the only child of the second wife of his father and his father sent him away from his compound when he was nine. So he had this put, he grew up in the tradition very early in his child, but then he was kind of brought in to protect him from the other families because his mother was passed away. So he was the long, only child and, and all these other mothers and, like and sisters. Court intrigue. Sounds like kind of a court intrigue. Yes, so so it's, it's so he went into this hotel Kumbabang uh, in St. Louis and played for tourists for many many years. So so he was just playing there at the, the lake, uh, playing his music very close to this ocean. Uh, the ocean is actually right next there. There's the Senegal River entering the the ocean. The island of St. Louis is on an island in Saint, uh, um, in the Senegal River. It's a beautiful, gorgeous place. People are very educated. Um, uh, uh, they they have word teranga, which is very hosp- the, the, the law for te- for hospitality uh, and welcoming people. Uh, they're known for that, and and it's a very spiritual place. People go there for healing. So every time you go there, you experience this. But what is it about, life what transforms. Is it, what is it about working? With, so there's something that really. Uh, it's different. Yes. So so what? Yes. Yeah, so so what what makes him different is, is that he kind of spent a lot of time alone. So he developed kind of his softer touch of playing the chora, his own style. He started to write own songs, and then when when we played in this orchestra, he just played instrumental. We played jazz tunes, arranged, you know. And then in a sound check in Paris, he just like was starting to sing, and I love you, Sandur, and I love his singing. So I said, wow, I'm like, you know, it's so beautiful. We have to do recordings. But then I got a scholarship, came to New York, and Three years later, when I was, like figured out my way in New York, I, I thought, oh, I have to go back and do a recording you know, with him. So I went back and started to record these three songs, and they were so, so we didn't know what to expect. So we didn't plan how our music would turn out, and uh, it somehow we clicked. And it's like two old souls connecting. It was it wasn't us playing. It was we were dri- you know our music is is driven by some some some. Uh, higher energy it's it's not so this is a perfect moment to bring up this next question i want to ask you this because you your background is as a jazz musician primarily and of course ablay ablay's background is uh as part of the griot tradition west african so on on their on its face so jazz is often considered or a an american form but of course the original jazz musicians, um, when the form is created, were either the sons of slaves or grandsons or perhaps freed slaves themselves. So that makes their roots very often West African as well. Yeah, so th- these traditions are really strongly connected, although sometimes separated by as much as 400 years, right? Because the first slaves come to uh, yeah 
come come to the well the North America uh, that long ago, even you know longer than that. So so I want to ask you as a musician, as a jazz musician, do you feel that connection from your form to the griot form? Does it seem does it feel seamless in in any aspect, or is it something that didn't translate that well, perhaps? Or tell me. Well, it was a, a, um, there's, there's one thing, it was I, I started to transcribe a lot of their music and the family music uh, of Sissoko, or his family and brothers and sisters. And for instance, uh, I came across of the song Lamba, which is uh, around maybe 150, 200 years old. So it's maybe not, was not translated over, but if you, if you transcribe the song, you go, Bula, 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 di la, di da, yu, ba, bi, da, bu, du, bu, du, da. So it's, it sounded like swing, right? It's, it's this shorting of the note. Like if you think about classical instruments or playing a trumpet, you pa, 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 ta, ta, ta. It's like it's open sound, but it's not. Ba, bula, 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 di la, bi, bo, yu, ba. It's like a big band swing kind of sound. But then at the same time, when you hear it in, in the context of the family where the four sisters are singing, a Fulani flute player, a balafone player, and, and seven chorus playing, you don't hear jazz necessarily. You hear the shuffle, you hear, it's a different kind of music. It's also, it's a very different, you know, it has a social function still in their society. So there's a, there's a, there's a strong difference and there's a strong connection at the same time. You know, the one is the spiritual and the pastoral function that, that those storytellers and gurus have because they're telling these oral stories and the stories of people and families and they're connected by birth. They're there and they know the stories of the people. And then, you know, yet it's the roots of blues and, and the instruments, you know, like the, the, uh, the, the, um, uh, banjo and, and all these instruments which which kind of are very close to to some of the instruments over there so it's it's but it's fascinating it's slightly different there is a difference a strong difference and for me it was coming as a jazz student I was happy to find this place where I didn't have to use my academy my thinking to make music and very often I was like am I allowed to just play a B flat major scale <laughs> without chromatics, you know, and express my feelings and 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 try to blend in this instrument is a very different, you know, approach of of how to fit into this music. And and I think the the strong difference I, I, I apply in all of this, but this duo is, is unique in the sense is that I'm actually going to Africa because a lot of projects where we combine jazz and African music is the African musician actually adjusting to the jazz musicians. So for instance, the core is tuned in a certain way. So as soon as you add a piano, your tuning goes to the European temperate pitch. Well, you have You're, to do that though, right? Yes, you yeah. Can't, you just, you just yeah. can't. They say the blues comes from that difference of the balafon equally eight tones separated and it's like this, this other microtones which, which translated in a more bluesy kind of approach of the pentatonic and the sound. But it's, uh, you, you lose this kind of, you know, leaving the originality of, of an instrument like the African harp and, and leaving and, and experience that, that flow and this, this bed of, of music and, and overtones and just playing with that and playing and helping or adjusting to it or, or, or not adjusting, but, but being my own voice, but at the same time, not like I went the other direction. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Well, I think in most musicians it's like, oh, we just play African jazz, you know, it's, but it's, it's the opposite, you know, it's kind of like a Bly is still the function as a guru. He still tells the story he needs to tell as a storyteller. I understand and I'm just what you're saying. Mean, you're bringing, you're, you're taking your, it, you're taking yourself as a musician and putting it into the African context, as opposed to asking the African musician and put himself and his skills into the Western musical context. So I think that's what you're saying, right? Yeah, but it's also a question of, of, of um, you know, the approach of how, why do music? You know, why do you have music? And his role traditionally is as the mystical story, his history of the African harp is to heal the people. And his, his ancestor, which is interesting that his 43rd grandfather created this first instrument. You know, I can't go back to my, you know, my ancestor didn't develop the trumpet. You know, I just play trumpet, so it's not, you know, I, you know, I can't say that my family, you know, goes back to the first trumpet player and or not to Egypt, you know, <laughs> where we find the first trumpets. So, um, well, uh, one of the things about the griot tradition, so I, as I, in, in my, in my research, I found one, one of the people who was, they were saying it's translated, if you're a griot, you play, you sing, and you love the people. And it's, it's a value 
that seems to be incorporated into this intergenerational commitment that you have to the society. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that because it seems to transcend notes and harmonies uh, and chords and rhythms and speak to something integral to the culture itself. You're promoting or extending or sharing these values. That's something that you don't see in our music I, I, too often. I mean, I sometimes westernized music can be associated with a particular, you know, a song can have lyrics that refer to a value perhaps, uh, but griot as a movement seems to have a really specific set of values. I wonder if you could speak to that and it, the difference between it and other musical traditions as a result of these value sets. Well, uh, first of all, you, you know, what they always explain is that you can't be born as a guru, or you can't be, uh, you know, you become a guru, you're born into this family, you know, so this tradition. And um, so it, it, the interesting thing is that, that depending on who you ask and speak to, there are different philosophies, like, you know, Ablai stays in Senegal and he wants to keep the people not taking the boats to, to Europe and trying to explain them, if you go there, you have a miserable life, you're not going to be happy, you know, why don't you try to make a change and difference here in our country? And then his brother uh, moved to Paris and he started touring with Trilok Goto, a very famous uh, Indian percussionist who played with all the jazz greats. And he... He says, like, now everything, you can learn everything. Nothing is genealogy. You know, it's not related to, you know, you can learn core, you know, but then yet there is a difference. You know, it's, 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 it's really depending on who are you, where are you rooted and what kind of role you play. But there's, they, the one explanation is for them that there's two forces uh, in the traditions, Badenya, Fadenya. And Badenya is the, the female force which guards the tradition and Fadenya which transcends it, the male uh, force. But in this family, sometimes even singers, were the ones who had the Fadenia, the transcending force, because they became famous or great singers in, in, the, in, the, in their culture. But it's the interesting thing, it's in the oral culture for them, it's not sufficient to just copy it. And you would think because you don't have a book or, you know, a recording device or, you know, you can't write a symphony or, or no and play, you have to play this and you play this and then it comes together. You can't record that. We think from our Western point that, oh, no, we have to be very exact. You know, you have to, someone has to copy it so that we can have it black and white on paper that, this is the way you have, it has to be. And they're, 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 they're saying, no, that's not the point at all. The point is that you just have to add and bring it to wider audience or make it bigger in the culture. So it becomes a very like contemporary art aspect, you know, or, or pushing the boundaries or, you know, so it's, it's, it's it has that too. You were discussing just to talk for a moment about music of one of the most obvious differences between uh jazz music and other forms so the improvisational aspect as opposed to classically trained musicians where the, as you say they're learning right on the paper and it's not about improvisation it's about being correct right well it, in many ways yes uh because the, the, the technically we get so much better that you know it becomes so much expected from a musician well-trained musician and there's the other thing it's uh was, was like uh mama did the, the head of the african studies department who is actually senegalese uh he we we're about to end the interview and shut down the camera but he said in the very end there's you know there's there's uh uh three kinds of of, of real musicians you know one who maybe can't even play, you know, but he's he's he makes plays and he makes you cry and it's spiritual, very deep music. And the other one, he can just, you know, he's a virtuoso. And sometimes, you know, they they grow up in this Guido family and they're surrounded with music. They even haven't touched the instrument for 15 years, and then suddenly somebody says, "You're going to be the one who trans, you know, transmit to who who transmits the tradition." So he picks up the instrument and just can play, you know, because he was just grew up as a little child boy, seeing, hearing it all the time, and and then becomes the person who's continuing the family tradition and 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 then the others who are able to 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 attach a lot of people you know uh, who just can whatever they do they can attract a lot of people to them to the music or whatever they do or storytellers um, and very rarely you have this combination where someone has a capability of doing everything you know where they're they have reached this the, the spiritual depth or the expression you know where you, you reach people deeply and or the humanity in a, in a very deep way reach a lot of people and be a virtuoso at the same time. So, um, so that's, is that Mr. Sissoko you're saying, is he, has he reached that level of mastery? 
I would I would definitely say so. Yes, yeah. he's but, a very special music. But it's 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 also that he, as I told you before, he kind of grew up out of his family, so he could develop his own style. Next to the 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 festival, there was a jazz festival in Saint Louis for which is still going on for many many years. And Jules Avenel came by. Uh, uh, there's always the great jazz musicians. Like every year, there's one great famous musician coming to this festival and you get a chance to to play for them and also at, when he was older to play with them so he's he's became a much more versatile musician who had different much more different experiences so that also yeah. makes him unique i mean it's now these days the because it's the Greer musicians has been traveling so many and there's so many now everywhere all over the world so where by the way where can people if they want to check out the film how can they do it well, just by griotmovo.com, you can go to the website. Um, uh, you can griot.com. Griot.com. Yeah, griot. G o g r o i t. Movie. I o t. G r i o t. I o t. Movie. dot com. Movie. dot com. Yeah, and then same. If you look at Amazon, if you put in griot movie, then it's it should show up on Blasi Soko or you know from our website. Well, I want to thank you very much, Volker, for joining me tonight. It has been really interesting. I'm, I am a lover of world music, and I'm a particularly fond, I'm, I'm always thrilled as hell when I can trace the history of a tradition and understand it more, than, more deeply than just listening to it would allow. So I'm very thankful for yeah, providing this. Givers this document just, on film it's really just one thing you know i was i was embarrassed to not know this but the the story where the careers goes back to uh, for the first record where they found is is the epic of sundieta so it's the the uh, story from the 13th century that's the first story orally told by people who recounts that the, the king had griots and, and it's told by a griot so it's all right g-r-i-o-t movies yeah. Dot com. Also, you can check it out on Amazon. Uh, I want to thank you again for joining me tonight, Volker. And oh, thank uh, you, Phil. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Have a great night. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Good night.